Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Barkis Ophthalmology Tutorials. Today we will discuss about Terigium. So in this video, I will be covering both the theoretical as well as the practical aspects of the Terigium. So the Terigium is discussed under the headings of definition, histological pattern of the Terigium, the grading of Terigium, symptoms, signs and what is the management options we have. So without much delay, let's begin our video on Terigium. So as you can see in this picture, this is the bulbar conjunctiva. So there is a fold of bulbar conjunctival tissue which is crossing the limbus and then growing over the cornea. Okay. So there is degeneration of subepithelial tissue of the conjunctiva which is encroaching onto the cornea. So why this conjunctiva is able to cross its limits and go onto the cornea? The main barrier here is the limbal stem cells. Okay. As you can see, there will be limbal stem cells all around the limbus. These limbal stem cells prevent the growth of the conjunctival epithelial tissue over the cornea. So whenever this limbal stem cell is damaged, uh, that will lead to the growth of this conjunctival tissue over to the cornea. Okay. So by definition, pterygium is defined as triangular or wing shaped fibrovascular subepithelial ingrowth of degenerative bulbar conjunctiva which is crossing the limbus and moving on to the cornea. So this is the definition of pterygium. So what causes pterygium? It is mainly because of the sunlight or the UV radiation which will damage the limbal stem cells. So one of the favorite questions here in the practicals is why it is more common on the nasal side, why not on the temporal side? It is more common on the nasal side because we have the direct sunlight which is falling on the bulbar conjunctiva as well as the light which gets reflected from the nose and again falls on the bulbar conjunctiva. Because of this reason, the bulbar conjunctiva is receiving double amount of the UV radiation since it is more predisposed for pterygium. It can also occur on the temporal side very rarely. When it is occurring on the both the sides that is nasal and the temporal side it is called as double pterygium. Okay. Double pterygium. Right. So this is about definition and the cause for pterygium. When you do histological examination it shows the elastotic degeneration of subepithelial tissue with the vascularized granulation tissue under the epithelium and when this pterygium encroaches onto the cornea it will damage the corneal epithelium as well as Bowman's membrane and superficial stroma. Okay. So this is about the histology, why it is more common in the nasal part of the bulbar conjunctiva because of the light which is reflected from the nose and again it falls on the bulbar conjunctiva. Depending upon how much it has encroached onto the cornea. The first thing to call it as pterygium, it has to be on the cornea. So how many mm it is onto the cornea? Depending upon that it is graded as grade 1, 2, 3. So grade 1 when it is less than 2 mm of the cornea, when it is reaching 2 to 4 mm of the cornea, it is called as grade 2. When it is more than 4 mm or encroaching onto the pupillary area, it is called as grade 3. Okay. So it is graded as 1, 2, 3, less than 2 mm, 2 to 4 mm and more than 4 mm. The pterygium is less than 2 mm, that is in the grade 1, you can see the iron deposit line on the corneal epithelium, okay, which is anterior to the advanced edge of the pterygium. There will be an iron line which is seen anterior to the advanced edge of the pterygium and it is called as stalker's line, okay. Moving on to the symptoms of pterygium, most of the times it is asymptomatic, okay. Sometimes the patients may tell us foreign body sensation or grittiness or dryness of the eyes. There can be decreased vision. So this is one of the favorite questions. How the pterygium will cause decreased vision? One is quite obvious. That is when the pterygium is approaching the pupillary area. So it will block the visual axis. Hence there is diminution of vision. The second mechanism is it will lead to compression of this part of the cornea. Means it will press the cornea to some extent leading to flattening of this meridian leading to astigmatism. So because of the astigmatism patient will experience decreased vision. So what is the type of astigmatism here? The horizontal axis is flattened and hence the vertical axis is steep. So it is with the rule astigmatism. Okay. Those are the two reasons for decreased vision. One is because it is encroaching onto the pupillary area. Second is leading to astigmatism. Third is patient may present it as a cosmetic problem. And then the final one is with the double vision. Patient can present with a double vision because whenever this pterygium is infiltrating into the underlying structures like here the medial rectus muscle patient can have double vision okay so because of the infiltration of the medial rectus muscle so these are the symptoms of pterygium that is it can be asymptomatic first can lead to foreign body sensation and redness grittiness decreased vision cosmetic problem and double vision 
So when you look into the signs of the pterygium, when you check the visual acuity, it can be decreased depending upon the extent of the pterygium, either because of the astigmatism or because it's covering the pupillary area. Then when you are looking into the growth, describe the growth. It can be described as a fleshy mass, okay, which is present over the bulbar conjunctiva with a vascularized tissue crossing the limbus and coming over the cornea. For how many mm you should mention? Covering here in this case covering almost 2 to 3 mm of the cornea. So this is how you describe the pterygium. So in this picture only let us see the parts of the pterygium. So this part is called as the head of the pterygium, neck of the pterygium and this is the body of the pterygium. Okay. So this whitish thing which is seen in front of the vascularized tissue is called as the cap. This anterior most part is the cap of the pterygium. So cap, head, neck and the body of the pterygium. So these are the parts of pterygium. Pterygium can also be classified into progressive pterygium and regressive pterygium. The question is why you want to classify it as progressive or regressive? Because the progression of the pterygium will vary depending upon the types and even the management will differ. In case of progressive pterygium, the progressive pterygium is very thick, fleshy, vascular, okay, with the infiltration in front of the head of the pterygium called as fuchs spots or the eyelids of oak or the cap of the pterygium. So these are features of progressive pterygium. So this is an example of regressive pterygium. So you can see there is a fold of conjunctiva here, but it is very thin, transparent, not highly vascularized. You can still make out the underlying scleral vessels, okay. So this is regressive pterygium and there is no cap also here. There can be presence of the stalker's line that is the iron deposits in the cornea. So these are the features of regressive pterygium. So what are the complications you can expect in pterygium if you do not treat? It can undergo cystic degeneration and inflammation. There can be even neoplastic or the malignant changes in the pterygium called as epithelioma. So these are the complications of pterygium that is cystic degeneration and the neoplastic changes. Coming to the differential diagnosis for the pterygium is the pseudo pterygium. So what is pseudo pterygium? Sorry for the spelling mistake. Pseudo pterygium. How the pseudo pterygium will occur? It is mainly seen following the chemical injuries. Suppose there is a chemical injury for this side. Then there is inflammation in the chemosis of the conjunctiva. So there is elevated conjunctiva as well as because of the chemical injury there can be a raw surface which is created over the cornea. So this chemosed conjunctiva will come and adhere to this raw surface leading to formation of pseudo pterygium. It looks similar to the pterygium but there are few differences between true pterygium and pseudo pterygium. The differences are the first one is the cause as you know the pterygium is secondary to the UV radiation whereas pseudo pterygium is following the chemical injury. Coming to the age true pterygium is seen in the elder age group whereas pseudo pterygium can be seen at any age. The site more common in the nasal bulbar conjunctiva that is true pterygium whereas pseudo pterygium can be seen at any site depending upon the site of injury. Stages true pterygium can be either progressive or regressive whereas pseudo pterygium is stationary. Probe test what is probe test? So what is probe test? That is passing a probe here at the neck of the pterygium means between the pterygium and the underlying structures. So that is not possible in case of true pterygium but you can pass a probe here in case of pseudo pterygium okay. So these are the differences between true and pseudo pterygium and this is a favorite 5 mark question as well as the viva question. So coming to the management of the pterygium, if the patient is asymptomatic there is no need to treat. If the patient is coming with the symptoms of dry eyes or the grittiness you can do the medical management by using lubricating eye drops. If there is inflammation give the anti-inflammatory drugs like topical NSAID drugs or even the very mild topical steroids can be used to treat the pterygium. When you want to go for the surgical management. So there are certain indications for surgical management. The first one is the cosmetic problem. If the patient complains that it is cosmetically unacceptable, go ahead with the surgery. When it is causing decreased vision, either because of the astigmatism or because it is covering the pupillary axis, then that is a definite indication for surgery. And the third indication is whenever the patient is complaining of the double vision because of your infiltration into the medial rectus muscle, then that is also an indication for surgical management. So what are the surgical techniques we have? So let me explain the principles of surgery first. In Bayer's clearer technique, you are just removing the pterygium okay, and leaving it alone. 
Whereas in case of conjunctival limbal autograft following our surgical excision of the pterygium, you are removing this part of the pterygium and replacing this part, okay, this part of the base sclera with the conjunctival autograft, okay. Whereas in amniotic membrane graft, similarly, this part is replaced is replaced by the amniotic membrane. Sometimes when the pterygium is quite deep into the cornea, there you may need to do lamellar keratoplasty, okay. So the surgical options what we have is bare sclera technique, surgical excision with a conjunctival autograft, surgical excision with the amniotic membrane graft and along with that whenever you are using amniotic membrane graft or the conjunctival autograft, you can use the mitomycin C or the beta irradiation to prevent the further growth or the recurrence of the pterygium and sometimes the patient may need lamellar keratoplasty. So coming to the steps of the pterygium surgery. So coming to the steps of the pterygium surgery, it is done under local anesthesia that is either by using peribulbar block or even the topical anesthesia. So after giving local anesthesia, eyelids are retracted using universal eye speculum. So the main pathology is in the subepithelial area, right? So separate the epithelium of the conjunctiva from the subepithelial elastotic degenerated tissue. Okay. And then excise that part and even the conjunctiva is excised up till the limbus or 1 to 2 mm away from the limbus and then if it is left alone it is called as base clearer technique if it is replaced with the conjunctival autograft from the superior temporal aspect of the bulbar conjunctiva here the bulbar conjunctiva is taken and the patch of that is placed here and it can be either sutured to the conjunctiva or you can use the fibrin glue and just stick it there or even you can use the autologous serum means after doing all this procedure there will be bleeding here or that clotted blood only you just place this conjunctival autograft okay and in case of amniotic membrane graft the amniotic membrane patch is placed over this area so this is the surgical procedure and one more question is from where you get the conjunctival autograft the most common is from the same eye in the superior temporal aspect or if the eye is damaged because of some other reasons like Steven Johnson syndrome or because of the some chemical injury it can be taken from the other eye okay that is the amniotic membrane is harvested from the placenta okay one of the layers of the placenta is the amniotic membrane from there the amniotic membrane is harvested usually following the cesarean section cases not through the vaginal delivery cases because the amniotic membrane can get infected following the vaginal delivery so following cesarean section the amniotic membrane is harvested from the placenta the complications of the pterygium surgery the most common complication is the recurrence which is more common in case of base clear technique okay the recurrence chances are very high up to almost 80 to 90 percent of the cases if you use the amniotic membrane graft or the conjunctival autograft you are replacing the limbal stem cells to some extent thereby preventing the recurrence when it is combined with the mitomycin c or the beta irradiation the recurrence chances are still reduced further okay then the other complications can also be seen in the post-operative period so once the surgery is done if you are done just bare sclera technique just treat with antibiotic eye drops that is topical antibiotic eye drops and, and the lubricating eye drops and the lubricating eye ointment if you have used the graft combine the antibiotics with the steroid to prevent the graft rejection so this is about the surgery for pterygium so this is all is expected from the undergraduates both for the theory as well as for the practical aspects. So hope you like the video on pterygium. If you like my videos, please do subscribe to my channel. Press the bell icon for further notifications. Please do like and share my video. Thank you so much.